Well, I think that's a very complicated, difficult question to answer. I I wish I had the answer, then I uh, would have solved AML. Um, but, uh, you know, AML, like many other malignancies, is very heterogeneous. There are lots of mutations and pathways that are impacted. And to be honest with you, one AML is different than the next than the next. So when I'm rounding upstairs on the leukemia service, you know, I see a younger patient with de novo AML and an NPM1 mutation. I'll see another patient who's had who's 85 and maybe has that MDS and that MDS has become AML. And now, uh, you know, that that's there. Then you go to another room and you'll see a patient who had breast cancer and got chemo and radiation. And as a result of that has a P53 mutated AML. So each of these cases are going to be in some ways different than the other. Um, so, uh, but unfortunately in AML, because we haven't had much, we've treated all these small nails with the same big hammer and that's not the right approach. Um, so I think over time we need to find the molecular pathways that underpin these diseases, the mutations that drive them and try and combine targeted therapies with traditional treatments to see if we can find more gentle yet effective approaches for these patients. Um, we are, and we're making progress. You know, you already mentioned IDH mutated AML. We have IDH inhibitors. You, there's FLT3 mutated AML. We have FLT3 inhibitors, maybe menin inhibitors for MPM1 mutated patients and KMT2A altered patients. So over time, as we get these drugs that are targeted, perhaps better tolerated, combine them with traditional treatments, we can find ways to lessen toxicity and improve um, eff efficacy. Uh, I'm currently running a multi-center study in the United States looking at traditional intensive chemotherapy that we've used for you know four or five decades in AML and comparing it to azacitidine and venetoclax, a more gentle outpatient regimen that doesn't uh, beat up the marrow as much, but nevertheless does cause, does have significant activity. So I'm trying to basically see if there are better non-intensive uh, options out there that don't um, commit patients to long hospitalizations and recurrent infections and complications. So that study is a phase two study and it's nearing uh, half uh, accrual right now. My hope is to finish it in the next year and a half.